Well, hello there. We are in session number three right now. And if you haven't watched session one or two, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Patricia King. They're all up there for you to study. And this is a free webinar that we have going here for you so that you can be empowered to prosper. We want you to get acquainted with the miracle working power of God in the area of provision. And I have a book that we've been featuring called Step Into Supernatural Provision. This is my story, my husband and my story of how we got acquainted with supernatural provision. We were put in a position by God where we had to only trust him and all hell broke loose. And we had to fight through every single attack until we gained authority in the realm. And now we're on the other side of it, helping not only individuals, but whole nations come into abundance. Okay. So if you want to impact nations and if you want to live in the abundance realm in your life, this book will help you. It's it's powerful. And so go on patriciaking.com and you can get hard copy or electronic version today. It's there available. But today I want to take you a little bit further into our study and I want to help you come into supernatural provision. I want to help you know how to connect with the miracle provision of God because God can materialize anything, anywhere, anytime. And he can even cause provision to show up in front of you. Last time I mentioned that about my gas tank filling up, I was on an empty tank and I had 45 miles to drive. And the Lord said, drive. And I thought, oh my gosh, I don't have any gas in my tank. He said, drive and I will provide. As I drove, I watched the gas gauge go up. It, it was on an empty tank and it went up. By the time I got home, which was 45 minute drive, I had three quarters of a tank full of gas. Okay, that's a miracle provision. Another miracle provision is when I had $20 bills hanging on cup hooks in my kitchen. There was no way that anyone could have put them there because I had just uh, taken the kids to school. Before I left the house, I, uh, I put the dishes away up in the cupboard and there was no $20 bills there. I locked the door. My husband was already at work and only the two of us had the keys. Took my children to school and did some errands, came back. And there was $20 bills hanging on the cup hooks. I don't know how they got there to this day. Maybe God created them out of nothing. Maybe an angel brought them, but this is supernatural provision. And I've seen money multiply. I've seen bank accounts get filled. I've, I've seen so many provisional miracles. I've seen food appear. I mean, God is a miracle working God, and I want to encourage you in that realm. Now, Today, I want to help you with um, Genesis 26. We're going to look at a portion of scripture here. Genesis 26, starting in verse 12. And this is where Isaac, many of you know this, but I want to show you something out of here. It says, Isaac sowed in the land that he was in. It wasn't, it wasn't a great land either, by the way, to sow in. You know, it was a cha it had its challenges, but Isaac didn't sow in the land because it was a good land. He sowed in the land because he had a covenant with God and God told him to be there. OK, you have a covenant with God. That means a legally binding agreement of blessing with your God that he made with you through Jesus Christ's finished work on the cross. So Isaac, he sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Now, sowing and reaping is a divine law. It is a, a law that we find in scripture right back to Genesis 8, verse 22, where God made a covenant with Noah. He said, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and a corresponding harvest. OK, so that is a covenant. And as, as long as the earth remains. So God started showing there that when you sow, there will be a harvest. We see it in the New Testament as well through Paul's teaching. It's all the way through the scripture. This is kingdom economy. Now, when we are wanting to prosper, we don't want to have a love of money or a love for material things because if you have that, that's the spirit of the world and it's the lust of the flesh. So we don't want to have that. We want to have the purity of God in this, but we want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he wants to increase us. Right in Genesis 1, it says in verse 28 that he blessed them and he said, be fruitful and what? Multiply. He always wants you to increase. He wants you to go beyond where you are right now. And so here's Isaac. He sows and he reaps. See the sowing? 
You don't reap and then sow. You sow and then reap, right? So he sowed his seed, and in the same year, he reaps a hundredfold. Now, some commentaries say a hundredfold is a hundred times, and other commentaries say it's folded over, like one folded over is two, folded over is four, folded over is eight, folded over is 16. You do that a hundred times, and that's, that's a big number. Either way, it's really good, right? So this happened in one year. But it says not only did he reap, but it says, and the Lord blessed him. And you'll find that as you sow with intentionality, that God will also bless you in other areas of your life as well, because it goes with the planting of that seed. When you sow a seed, it puts you in a pathway of blessing. But you have to do it in faith and you have to do it with intentionality. Remember in a previous session, I talked about being double-minded. You can't think, well, I'm gonna try this sewing, but it might not work. I know God says it, but I don't know if it's gonna work for me or not. That's being double-minded. You might as well not do it. You have to have conviction that it's going to be there and have ex expectancy, just in the same way that a farmer does. When he puts his seed in the ground, he knows that that seed is going to produce for him, right? So he will sow with intentionality, depending on how much crop he wants to get out of the ground is how much seed he's going to sow in relationship to that. And so that's what God is highlighting here. But when he did sow the seed and the Lord blessed him, and God wants to bless you in every area of your life, and it comes through sowing. But then it says, not only did he reap a hundredfold and the Lord bless him, guess what else happened? He became rich. It says, and the man became rich. Now, God wants you to be rich. And again, don't just think about money because money is a worldly currency and we're not going to worship money and we're not going to let the lusts of our flesh go after money. You know, it's not about that. But it is about the stat, state of being rich in all things. Now, when you're rich, that's your personal abundance. It's more than just what you need. It goes beyond what you need. It, 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 it pours over into fulfillment of desires. And when you've got what you need plus fulfillment of desires, you're rich. That's what rich is all about. So he became rich. How did that rich come? Through the sowing of the seed. And then it says, and he continued to grow richer. So it went in greater degrees of rich until he became very wealthy. And that's the state that God wants every believer in. He wants us to be wealthy. It says in Isaiah 60, um, a very um, important chapter of the Bible because it's prophetic of our day. Arise and shine, your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The word glory there speaks of wealth. But then it goes on to say, and the wealth of the nations will come to you. And it doesn't just mean souls, although it can include souls, but it's talking about the camels, the gold, the silver, everything, everything that, that, that is a commodity. It's mentioned in that chapter. So it's in reference to, the wealth is in reference to commodities. And God wants you to be wealthy in all things. He wants you to be wealthy, of course, in material substance. But he wants you to be wealthy in relationships, wealthy in anointing, wealthy in gifting, you know, wealthy in wisdom. He wants you to be wealthy, an overflow of everything. Because wealth is different from being rich. Wealth enables you to influence the world around you. Rich is for yourself, but wealth is your influence. And the most influential people in the world are the ones who hold the wealth. They hold the wealth. And so you want to um, position yourself, position yourself to come into reaping abundantly, being blessed, becoming rich, richer, and wealthy. How did that happen? Through the sowing of seed. Now in the Bible, you'll see the tithe, the tithe is mentioned in Malachi 3, verse 10. And the tithe is 10% of your income. But it's the first 10%. Because God is worthy of the first and the best. So if you want divine glory and divine blessing, there needs to be divine alignment. Many people say, oh, I don't believe in the tithe. Well, do you believe in God putting, putting God first in all things? Because if so, why would you hold on to your money and not give them? Now, you can give more. There's no limit. I mean, we're under the the new covenant, I mean, there's never been a limit. God loves a generous heart, but he mentioned the tithe so that you've got kind of a, a guideline of what is honoring to him. 
and he said the top 10% is what honors him. So you honor God with your wealth. It says in Proverbs that your barns will be full of plenty, but then there's the offerings and the seed that you sow. And when you sow, you want to sow into good ground. You want to sow into good ground. Jesus talked about that in Mark 4. Because if you sow into good ground, and I would say good ground is ground that can produce fruit. So when you're sowing into a ministry that's representing um, the, the, the Lord's work and the Lord's kingdom, you want to make sure it's a ministry that is bearing fruit. And it's also a good steward of finance that isn't greedy or isn't materialistic or whatever, that they've got their eyes on the kingdom. That's good soil. And I was... Um, talking to my gardener just a, a, a couple weeks back and a, a number of months ago I had him come in and plant some oleander bushes because I want to build a hedge in my backyard. Every single bush he planted were all the same size. They were, every single one was the same size and they were all planted in the same backyard. But then I called him in a couple weeks ago and I said, I don't understand what's happening because these bushes over here on the left side, the first three, they're growing so big and fast. But look at these ones over at the end over here. They're just little, little tiny trees still. You know, they hardly grew at all. And what is the problem? Is there something wrong with the oleander bush? And he said, no, no, it's the soil. He said, the backyard is a different soil. Like if we had to tilled up the soil and put, you know, a lot of peat and a lot of um, uh, fertilizer into it and enrich the soil, then those would work, grow also. And so that's what I'm working on now is giving them more fertilizer and making the soil richer so that they can grow as well. So you always want to make sure that your soil is rich, that you're sowing your seed into. So sow into ministries that are, that are producing for God and who have integrity. And you know, you, you don't want to sow into works that have no fruit and that are struggling and barely getting by and don't really know the promises of where you want. You want to sow where there's fruitfulness. And Jesus said, that if you do that, you'll yield 30, 60, 100 fold. And again, it has to do with the soil you're sowing into. Uh, just like my little trees are maybe 30 fold, but the bigger trees were 100 fold, right? So the tithe will open the heaven for you. The tithe will rebuke the devourer. The tithe will enable to position you to be blessed. But your seed is what is going to give you your increase. It's going to be the multiplication for you. Now, some of you are saying, oh, but I've done that and nothing works. So, you know, I tried it. This isn't something you try. This is something you do nonstop and continuously for your whole life. When my husband and I were in that real difficult season, we never thought, oh, well, we tried this. Let's, you know, it doesn't seem to be working. If we had done that, we wouldn't be where we are now, influencing nations. We would still be back there struggling. But no, we had to move all the way through, standing on the word, not relenting, just going back. Now, now if you've been wavering in your faith, just ask God to forgive you and the blood of Jesus will cleanse it and you can get back on track. But I just want to encourage you that as you're, as you're um, coming out of lack into abundance, that the key will be God's economy and the things he teaches you. Just like Isaac, he sowed. He had to sow in order to reap. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Paul said to the church at Corinth, if you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. He also said that God will supply you with seed to sow and that he will give you food to eat as well. So don't eat your seed, eat the food he gives you to eat, but plant the seed, okay? Make sure you sow your seed and put God first. And I, I, I guarantee you that the day will come when it's going to be a full crop for you. Some seeds grow very quickly. When we were up in Canada, we used to have gardens all the time. And one of my favorite things I like to grow is Swiss chard because it grew so quickly. You know, it would grow up like that. But like if you plant an apple seed, it takes a while for it to bear fruit. But once it does, it bears fruit, bears fruit, bears fruit, has more seed inside the fruit. You could have a whole orchard from one, one apple seed, right? So you have to be patient and endure because sometimes it takes a few years or even longer to be able to reap. But once you start reaping, it comes and comes and comes. So don't grow weary in well-doing. In due time, you will reap if you faint not. I'm committed, 
I'm committed to believing with you for your breakthrough. I don't want to see one poor in the body of Christ because that's not God's heart. He wants us to be flourishing so that we can minister blessing to the nations, so that we can minister to the people around us. And all of us can do something even uh, right now. You can do something. You know, there's something that you can give. When I didn't have money to give, I gave other things. But I always kept the giving flow because that is what creates a pool of abundance for you. So go online, get step into supernatural provision. And if you're looking for good soil to sow into, I, I, I do want to say that I, I believe Patricia King Ministries is good soil. We are... We are committed to the Lord. We walk in integrity. We're good stewards of the funds that come in and we have fruit to, to show for it. And so if you're looking for a, you know, a ministry that really believes in your prosperity, that believes in seeing you move forward, that you wanna be a part of its fruit, I would highly recommend uh, uh, Patricia King Ministries. And you can give online on patriciaking.com. And we would love to have you also part of our partnership. That would be great. So there's one more session I want to do for you. Session four coming up again. If you do not have the other sessions, go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to that. And uh, all, the, all the sessions will be there for you. God bless you.